Watch what happens to this famous YouTuber after he marks God. You need a therapist because Jesus isn't quite doing it for you. I just am definitely questioning why we have to perpetuate a belief that is f***ing I, I, silly. I, because I'll be honest with you, bro. Jesus Christ. I defamed Jesus and God and I felt his wrath. <laughs> the following three weeks have been the hardest period of my life started off in uh in qatar i got violent food poison camera taken away at the airport get to my hotel you know think it's, it's just little things here and there things are showing up we misscheduled next day got alcohol poisoning our luggage was delayed qatar was the first time i felt the wrath of god and if you think he's the only one that has marked god and faced god's wrath you'd be very mistaken. Here is a list of people who have faced more severe consequences as a result of their God mockery. This is Tentrindo Neves, a former elected president of Brazil. It is reported that during his campaign, he said that if he got 500,000 votes from his party, not even God would remove him from the presidency. He did get the votes to become the president, but here is the shocking thing that happened to him. He got sick a day before he was sworn in as president and died soon after. Here's another example. Do you remember the Titanic? Behind me is Thomas Andrews, an Irish businessman as well as a shipbuilder. This naval architect was in charge of the plans for one of the most famous ships in history, the RMS Titanic. Thomas was extremely confident in the design of his ship and said that it was unsinkable. This is the point where he mocked God, saying, not even God himself can sink this ship. Thomas was of course on the Titanic during its maiden voyage, and as we all know, on April 14th, 1912, the Titanic struck an iceberg and sank. Thomas, along with 1,500 other passengers on this day, passed away. Thomas's body was never recovered. In at number two, most people will probably have heard of John Lennon. John Lennon was a member of one of the most famous bands ever, The Beatles. And some years ago, during an interview with American Magazine, John Lennon said, Christianity will end. It will disappear. I do not have to argue about that, I am certain. Jesus was okay, but his subjects were too simple. Today, we are more famous than him. And as we all know, John Lennon's life was taken by a crazed fan. In fact, in this photo right here, that's the guy that took his life, the one that's looking all creepy. This other example is very interesting. This right here is Deontay Wilder, a boxing champion. On one occasion, he was to be in a boxing match against Tyson Fury, who is a real man of God. He ended up mocking God in their pre-match interview and later lived to regret it watch jesus christ is my savior and i don't believe in all spirits and alter egos and even mentioning stuff like that on tv you're getting it you. nobody can be against me and if you're entering spirits and stuff into your body you can't win you've already lost before destruction the heart of man is haughty and win the first couple rounds All right hand down goes wilder wilder down goes wilder he's knocked down oh, oh my goodness seven Of Deontay Wilder. Wow. Fury, like I told him, he had pillows as, as fists. Wilder's legs are not underneath him. Wilder is in huge trouble. No knockdown. No knockdown. He's got to get out of this round, right? He bought himself some time right there. Something about the legs of Deontay Wilder isn't working. Wilder is exhausted. Fury down goes Wilder again for the second time in the fight. Badly, they are stitching him up and they will immediately take him to the hospital for a neurological test and to make sure that he is okay after that brutal beatdown he suffered at the hands of Tyson Fury. This other story right here is the most shocking. Reportedly in Campinas, Brazil, a group of friends drunk went to pick up a friend the mother accompanied her to the car and was so worried about the drunkenness of her friends and she said to the daughter, holding her hand, who was reportedly already seated in the car, she said this, my daughter, go with God and may he protect you. The daughter responded, only if God 
travels in the trunk because inside here it is already full. Hours later, the news came that they had been involved in a fatal accident and everyone had died. The car they were traveling in could not even be recognized as what type of car it had been but surprisingly, the trunk was intact. The police said there is no way the trunk could have remained intact. To their surprise, inside the trunk was a crate of eggs and none of them broke. That right there. I mean, how prideful and ignorant do you have to be to disrespect the one who gives you your daily breath, the one who causes the food that you eat to grow, the one who as described by Jesus even has the hairs of your head numbered. That's why when I see people mocking God, I usually think, do these people really think through what they're doing or do they just utter careless words? But still the question remains, why do people mock God? Well, the short answer is this. And the dominant sin in fallen man is pride. He will spin a web of delusions about himself that he is good, noble, anything but that his deeds are evil. I want you to listen to this story in the Bible of this foolish king who taught himself as God. This is the king of Tyre in Ezekiel 28. This is what the word says. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre, this is what the sovereign Lord says. In the pride of your heart, you say, I am a God. I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas. But you are a mere mortal and not a God, though you think you are as wise as God. Want to know what happened to this arrogant, prideful king? God dashed him to pieces. He destroyed his pride and brought him foreigners who killed him and destroyed him. The prideful king died a very shameful and a violent death. And the word of the Lord says this about him in verse 9. Will you then say, I am a God in the presence of those who kill you? You will be but a mere mortal, not a God, in the hands of those who slay you. See what I'm talking about? The issue right here is pride. These days people blaspheme God shamelessly. They think they got it all. They sold the holy name of God. They use his holy name as a curse word. They shake fists against him as if to want to start a fight against a very powerful omnipotent God. So when God wanted to create fish, he spoke to the sea. When God wanted to create trees, he spoke to the earth. But when God wanted to create man, he turned to himself. So God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Notice, if you take a fish out of the water, it will die. And when you remove a tree from the ground, it also dies. Similarly, when man disconnects from God, he dies. God is our natural environment. We were created to live in his presence. We have to be connected with him because only with him life exists. Remember, that water without fish is still water, but fish without water is nothing. The soil without the tree is still soil, but the tree without soil is nothing. God without man is still God, but man without God is nothing. Let us stay connected with God.